Hi everyone, uh, my name is Laura Wiss. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Pennsylvania and uh, most of my work focuses on imaging of the medial temporal lobe. So today I'll be talking about medial temporal lobe sulci. But before I start, I want to point out that I'm not a neuroanatomist. I'm a neuroimager, so everything I tell you is to the best of my knowledge as a neuroimager. Also, I want to point you to two papers that have been particularly useful to me. So this one and this one. So why are we interested in medial temporal lobe sulci, uh, that's because they can be very helpful for the segmentation of regions such as the anterorhinal and the perirhinal cortex. Um, so it's helpful to be able to identify each of the sulci in the medial temporal lobe. Uh, so there's the sulcus semiannularis, the rhinal sulcus, the collateral sulcus, the occipitotemporal sulcus, the mid-fusiform sulcus, the calcarine sulcus, and the flix. And for segmentation purposes, actually, I only use the sulcus semiannularis, the collateral sulcus, the occipitotemporal sulcus, and the calcarine sulcus. But it's important to be able to identify all of these sulci so you don't accidentally mix them up with each other. And uh, you'll see why that could happen. So I want to start with the sulcus semiannularis. So I'm going to go a little bit further interior. So what you see here is a post-mortem image of the medial temporal lobe opened in ITK SNAP. And to orient you a little bit in general, this is the hippocampus, the amygdala, the medial side of the brain, and here's the lateral side of the brain. And generally speaking, going from medial to lateral, the first sulcus that you see is the collateral sulcus, and the second is the OTS the occipitotemporal sulcus, and I'll come back to that later. The first thing that I wanted to show you was the sulcus semiannularis, which is right here. So this is actually a very shallow sulcus, and it marks the border between the anterorhinal cortex and the amygdala. But unfortunately, it's pretty shallow, so it can be hard to identify. So it's so here, and then going in a different direction, you can see it here as well. So you can imagine uh, on in lower resolution in vivo images that this one could be a little bit difficult. So the next sulcus that I want to show you, and I already pointed it out to you, is the collateral sulcus. So that would, generally speaking, be the first one that you find going from medial to lateral from the hippocampus. Uh, but I do want to point out that it's generally pretty hard to be sure uh, which sulcus is which just on a single slide. So it's generally helpful to go back and forth. So the collateral sulcus is actually of interest because it can help you demarcate the other border of the anterorhinal cortex, but also, for example, of the Brodmann, of Brodmann area 35. And actually these borders depend on uh, which type of collateral sulcus you have and how deep it is. And so as I already said there, different types of collateral sulci. Um, so one type is continuous and the other type is discontinuous and both occur approximately in 50% of the cases, although there are like 3% of the cases which don't fall in either of them, in either of the two groups. So I'm going to start with the easy one, the collateral sulcus, um, so the continuous collateral sulcus. So the way to determine that is we find the collateral sulcus or what we think is the collateral sulcus and we go in a posterior direction. We're going to see if we can follow this collateral sulcus. So I'm going to put the crosshairs on the collateral sulcus. We're going in a posterior direction. You can still see it. Still see it. We're almost at the end of the hippocampus. And I can still see it. So because we could follow this collateral sulcus all the way from the anterior end to the posterior end, we call this continuous collateral sulcus. So I'm going to show you a different example. So what we see here is, again, the hippocampus. This is a different hemisphere. So this would be medial, this would be lateral. So going from medial to lateral, again, generally speaking, the first sulcus that you see is the collateral sulcus. So we're going to again follow this in a posterior direction. 
Stay the campus. We're gonna see if we can follow it. We're now in the body uh, po portion of the hippocampus. We're going further posterior, further posterior, and we can follow it all the way to the end. So again, because we could follow this collateral sulcus all the way to the end, we will call it continuous collateral sulcus. So I'm now gonna show you an example of the discontinuous collateral sulcus. Going a little bit further anterior. So again, hippocampus, this is medial, this is lateral. So the first sulcus that we see is probably the collateral sulcus. So what you can probably already see is that this sulcus is much more shallow than we've seen in the previous example. So for example, here you see the collateral sulcus is much more deep. So if we follow this one in a posterior direction, you can see that it becomes smaller and smaller and here it disappears. But what you also see is then that a little bit more lateral, an another sulcus appears. So that would be the posterior part of the collateral sulcus. So what you saw here is the anterior part and this is the posterior part which we can then follow all the way to the posterior end of the hippocampus. So that would be the posterior collateral sulcus. So because the sulcus disappears and then appears, we call this discontinuous collateral sulcus. So unfortunately, that's not all. There's another complicating factor for the, rhinal uh, for the collateral sulcus and that's the rhinal sulcus. I'm going to show you an example of that. I'm going to go in a posterior direction and we've already seen this case and we know that this is the collateral sulcus. And going further anterior, you can see actually a second sulcus appear in a more medial location. So again, this was medial, this was lateral. So this is the rhinal sulcus. So what you can see is this medial of the collateral sulcus and going in a posterior direction it travels up the medial bank of the collateral sulcus. I have to say that I'm not sure if this is always the case but I guess this is the case in this example and then it disappears. So uh, perhaps you're wondering now why is this a rhinal sulcus and why is, it not, is this not a discontinuous collateral sulcus? Well, the reason why I think that is for one, this collateral sulcus is very deep in contrast to uh, this example where the collateral sulcus is pretty shallow. This was the discontinuous example that I showed you. And second, because we already saw that we could follow it all the way from anterior to posterior. So that is the reason why I think this is the rhinal sulcus and not an anterior part of the collateral sulcus. Okay, so we've now covered the sulcus semiannularis, the rhinal sulcus, and the collateral sulcus. I want to move on to the occipital temporal sulcus now. So, again, I'm going to go in an anterior direction. This is medial, this is lateral, going from the hippocampus in a lateral direction. This would probably be the collateral sulcus, and this would be the OTS, the occipital temporal sulcus. So this sulcus is important for me because I use it to determine the border of Brodmann area 36. And I should probably point out this paper, which uh, has a, includes the segmentation protocol of these cortical regions and makes use of these different sulci. So we're gonna now try and follow the OTS uh, in a posterior direction. So, I'm going to go, oh, we're going in the wrong direction. So in a posterior direction, this is the OTS. I can still follow it. And then what you see happening here is a little bit weird. And it looks like a bifurcation. So what you see here is probably two parts of the OTS, which bifurcate and then the medial portion disappears and then only the lateral portion stays 
the lettable portion of the OTS. So we can follow this in a more posterior direction. So that's actually something that happens with the OTS, unfortunately. Uh, it can bifurcate or trifurcate even, or sometimes disappear for a couple of slices. So it's pretty complicated. So the other thing that I want to point out, which you maybe saw already, is this tiny sulcus here, um, which is uh, a bit triangular in shape, and it's pretty shallow. And uh, this would be the mid-fusiform sulcus. So this is the fusiform gyrus, and this would be the mid-fusiform sulcus. And I don't actually think everybody has the mid fusiform sulcus, but it's good to be able to identify it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna show you a slightly more complicated example of the OTS. So we've seen this case already. So this is medial, lateral. So this is the collateral sulcus, and this is probably the OTS. So I'm gonna try again, go in a posterior direction and try and follow this OTS. So I can follow it. What I do see here is I see a second portion appear. So I think this is a bifurcation with a medial and a lateral portion. Going in a posterior direction, I can still see the two portions and still there. And then you can see that the medial portion disappears and the lateral portion is still there still there and then it disappears so I'm gonna go a little bit further posterior and then to a point where I again think I understand the anatomy so again hippocampus this is CS collateral sulcus this is probably OTS so I'm gonna go now in an anterior direction to see what is happening there so going in an anterior direction I see that this big OTS is now separating in two so one and two and then going further anterior you can see that they separate and then start to disappear and then actually when they disappear so you see the two here you can see this portion of the OTS appear again so that was the one that we saw before so the OTS here disappears and then from these two points it appears again and these two points merge and if you go then in a posterior direction you can continue to follow this one so this is a slightly more complicated uh, version of the OTS and unfortunately the OTS is really difficult and it's actually the the sulcus that is for me most difficult to identify so I'm going to go a little bit further anterior to point something out to you. And that would be, you can remember these two merge together and then they, if you go in an anterior direction, they start to disappear. And then when they disappear, you actually see a little sulcus appear in the middle. And that I think would be the mid fusiform sulcus. So again, mid fusiform gyrus, and I think this is the mid fusiform sulcus. And then I'm going in a posterior direction again. The mid fusiform sulcus disappears, and then these two portions of the OTS appear. So we've now discussed the first five, and I'm gonna continue with the calcarine sulcus. So Calcarine sulcus is one that appears very far posterior, so I'm going to go in a posterior direction. We've already seen this example, so hippocampus, medial, lateral. This is the collateral sulcus. And going in a posterior direction, you can see a small sulcus appear here, which then becomes bigger if we go in a more posterior direction. And it's generally pretty shallow, and it points either in a inferior or in a lateral direction and that would be the calcarine sulcus and we have used it to in our paper to demarcate the posterior border of the parapocampal cortex so i'm going to show you a different example 
Again, this is a sulcus that's for the posterior, so I'm going to go in a posterior direction. This is the hippocampus, this is the collateral sulcus, and if we're going in a posterior direction, you can see this sulcus appear. It's right next to the hippocampus, and it's pointing in a lateral direction, and that would be the calcarine sulcus. If you paid attention, you could have seen that between the collateral sulcus and the calcarine sulcus, there's another sulcus. So we're going a little bit further anterior, and you can see this little sulcus that appears that travels up the medial bank of the collateral sulcus. And here it is, and that would be the flex. So I think not everybody has this sulcus, uh, but it appears in a considerable number of people, and it's important to be able to differentiate that from the calcarine sulcus. And I think uh, it's generally located in a more lateral direction, and it can travel up the the medial bank of the collateral sulcus. So we've now covered all seven sulci, so I want to quickly go over them one by one. So we had the sulcus semianularis, which is very far anterior and it's a very shallow one. The collateral sulcus, which is the generally the first sulcus you see uh, going from the hippocampus in a medial to lateral direction and there's the continuous one that you can follow all the way through the length of the hippocampus and there's a discontinuous one with an anterior portion and a posterior portion and then of course there's the rhinal sulcus so this is medial this is lateral that appears very far anterior and medial to the collateral sulcus then there's the OTS going from medial to lateral, that's generally the second sulcus that you see, although it's a difficult one that can appear, disappear, bifurcate, and so on. The calcarine, oh, there's the midfusion verb sulcus first, which is a very shallow triangular one uh, in the middle of the fusiform gyrus. Uh, the calcarine sulcus, which is very far posterior and generally very uh, narrow, and then there's the flex, uh, which appears can appear between the calcarine sulcus and the collateral sulcus. So I hope this was helpful, uh, and thank you for listening.